Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, man was Bobby. Fascinating video today, guys. We're gonna react to I Met the Indigenous Muslims of Poland by the channel Dr. William Berillo. Recently, we've seen the Polish government being in the headlines for being Islamophobic. And not even one Muslim illegal migrant will come to Poland, ever. I personally grew up in Germany, which is bordering to Poland, and I met many Polish people. I have Polish friends myself. Not once did I hear that Islam has anything to do with Poland. When we're thinking about Poland, we're thinking about Catholicism and the Pope. So I have never met a Polish Muslim. This is why it's important to shed a light on this particular subject. With no further ado, guys, let's have a look. Although Poland hosts one of the tiniest Muslim minorities in the whole world, you have Muslim families who have been settled in Poland since the 14th century. So it is, at the same time, one of the oldest Muslim minorities in Europe. Hello and welcome, my name is William and today I wanted to share with you about Muslims in my parents' country, Poland. When I embraced Islam in 2008, my parents oh, would still go himself. to Poland visit Salaam family. Alaikum. I needed to figure out where I'm gonna pray where I'm gonna find a mosque or halal meat. Then I stumbled upon the Wikipedia page and I thought to myself, I didn't know that and I want to tell the world about this. I decided back then to produce my very first documentary, which you can find for free on YouTube, called Polish Muslims and Unexpected Meeting. Back then, the main right-wing narrative that. was that Muslims are not welcome in Europe because they were never part of it, they do not belong to Europe. The fact that you have Muslims... Absolutely settled... correct. This is the exact impression that we get in Europe. Europe has always been Christian. If you go up into the West, they are Catholics or Protestants. If you go down into the East, they are majorly Orthodox Christians. And the only contact with Islam was war. This is the narrative against the Ottomans or against the Arabs in Spain and Portugal. So the right-wing narrative is, as he said correctly here, that Europe always defended itself from Islam. In Poland since the 14th century was a magnificent counter-argument. So when I went to meet Muslims in Poland, I went to three different areas. I went, of course, to the capital city, Warsaw. Then I went to Katowice, which is in Sh uh, in Silesia, one of which was a very industrial region of Poland and the birthplace of my dad. Eventually, I went to Białystok in the northeastern part of the country. Muslims in Poland are made of, I would say, three main demographics. First, the largest population is made of all different kinds of people who arrived in Poland in the 20th century. So people from North Africa, uh, the Middle East, and later on West Africa, Turkey, now South Asia, and also lots of Muslims coming from the Caucasus, uh, Dagestan, Chechnya, and so on. Makes and thanks sense. to them, Poland has become the first and largest exporter of halal meat across Europe. Second are the wow, numerous Poles who embraced Islam at some point in their lives. Third are the Tatars. Uh, that's very interesting. We had many Polish girls in Germany reverting to Islam due to their boyfriends coming from a Muslim family. So this is the oldest Muslim community in Poland. Tatars are Tukric people who originated from Crimea and came to Poland in the 14th century to offer their military services to the Duke of Poland, Lithuania at the time. So to thank them for their services, the I know about the story and it's not quite correct. First they came as refugees, they've been shunned from their lands and then after that they offered their help. Duke of uh, Poland, Lithuania, Prince Witold offered the Tatars land and the right to practice their religion. Since then, you will find. Moreover, back then, the Duke even built mosques for them. Certain part of that. Poland, so around the city of Białystok, uh, mosques and cemeteries, which are 300, 400 years old and have a very distinct look. The highlight of my trip was meeting with the Tatars, obviously, because the first thing is when you look at the mosques, the way they are built is very similar to the That's way people beautiful. used to build 
uh, churches, yes. the rituals might differ a little bit from what people Absolutely, are used to man. see. I believe it was Timothy Winter, also known as Sheikh Abdel Murad, who talked about this phenomena, that Islam is like water. It is always pure, it is always crystal clear, it is always the same water. However, when you take this water and you pour it into a cup, as Bruce Lee said, It becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. And moreover, if you pour it into a red vessel, it appears red. If you pour it into a green vessel, it appears green. And this is something that we can observe with Islam when it was spreading organically back in the day. If you look at Indonesia, for example, Islam has this particular Indonesian flavor. The same applies in Thailand here, of course. It has the Thai flavor. Or Chinese Islam. Turkish Islam, etc, etc. But when I grew up in Germany, I saw certain Turkish organizations simply building mosques in a Turkish style and moreover, even the khutbah was in Turkish. So therefore, Islam did not make it into Germany, it did not immerse itself into Germany. You would expect Gothic type of mosques in Germany, for example. It has to blend in to the architecture of Germany, of course. Why should it be a foreign entity? If you think about Islam as a foreign entity, only Always, then it always will stay a foreign entity and the Germans will never accept Islam because they will see it as a threat. They won't see it as their own. And there speaks absolutely nothing against the beautiful traits of people as long as it goes hand in hand with Islam. Therefore, to take that craftsmanship, that architectural wisdom of the indigenous people and to fuse it with Islam is the most beautiful thing you can observe in my personal opinion. In Western Europe, for example, is... Uh, the concept of Sadoga. I went to Poland for Ramadan and I spent Sadaka. Eid uh, in, in Poland. And at the time, after the Eid Khutbah, people would uh, leave sweets on the minbar, on the mosque. And this is called Sadoga, which comes from the word Sadaka, you may have guessed. Right, and huh? because of communism, many Tatars had to hide their religiosity to the point where people even adopted Christian sounding names to hide. For example, Ali would become Alexander. And like uh, many Muslims, yeah. you would find in uh, Central Asia, uh, part of the like, ex communist bloc countries, for many people. My parents are from Macedonia, the former Yugoslav Republic. They were under communism, of course, and therefore I, growing up as an Orthodox Christian, was actually baptized in our flat because religion was persecuted. Islam has now become nothing more than a cultural heritage. So it, you will see people who are proud to be Muslim, but people who are also happy to drink some vodka. And there was a point, because of communism, where these historic mosques would open only 14 times a year, twice for Eid and 12 times for uh, because there was one Juma per month. And thanks to the wow. influx of migrants from the Middle East and other parts of the world, now the younger generations are starting to reconnect with their faith and traditions. So you would see younger Tatars who uh, wear the hijab, for example, while uh, it was not the case for their parents' generation. When it comes to other groups of Muslims, and because there is very few mosques in Poland, what was heartwarming is, unlike some Western uh, European countries, in the mosque you would find a huge diversity of people, people from very different uh, cultures, ethnicities, uh, social, economic backgrounds, people speaking all sorts of languages, and the khutbah would be in Polish. Sadly, you will have some nice. political divisions oh, when it, it comes be. to the representation of uh, Muslims in Poland, specifically between uh, the Muslim League, which is uh, made of people who mainly arrived in Poland in the 20th century, so the majority group of Muslims, and between the Tatars, who claim a right for representation because they are the oldest demographic of Muslims in Poland. Of course, also, the Tatars should. are an officially recognized minority by the government, and every year there is a commemoration of their military services to the country. And since I've made my documentary in 2012 2013, things have changed in Poland, and the far right has taken over with a very strong anti Muslim narrative. And shortly after I left 
I uh, read the news and saw the mosques being burned, people being attacked on the streets. So life has become slightly more difficult for Muslims in Poland. One striking example of how people try to go low profile now is this kiosk, this uh, small kebab shop uh, in the center of Warszawa, which was called um, Salam Aleikum Kebab. And I thought back in the days, that was really, really a bold idea to call your kebab shop Salam Aleikum Kebab in the middle <laughs> of Warszawa. And then, so I've returned to Warszawa last here and in the in the center of the city and now salam alaikum kebab has become hello kebab so if you nah. want to know more about muslims you gotta Poland, do what's good for business huh? have a look That's at a shame. this which is a very interesting example here as well because you see the display of westernization here from salam alaikum it becomes hello kebab but what does hello mean hello hello it's so extremely empty it doesn't mean anything meanwhile salam alaikum means peace be unto you um hello kebab so so if you want to Hello. know more about Muslims in Poland, I invite you to have a look at this documentary I produced uh, now, 10 years ago, which oh. is freely available on YouTube, Polish Muslims documentary, just type it on YouTube, it will appear. In the meantime, thank you for watching and take care of each other. All right, this is it for today's video. Very well put together. I'm sure there was a lot of information in here that is new for many people, especially new for many Polish people as well, because I personally never had a dialogue with a Pole that knew anything about Islam within Poland. And of course, to be fair here, the Tatar community is a very, very small minority. Therefore, it doesn't have a huge impact on Polish life. But nevertheless, it is part of history. It is part of an alliance between between Christians and Muslims. And depending on the government, this is easily forgotten, of course, due to the propaganda that is being pushed. Listen, guys, I'm not blue-pilled over here. I don't have any illusions. I know that immigration, especially mass immigration, can pose certain risks and threats towards a country. I'm not for open borders whatsoever. Every country has to maintain their sovereignty, has to protect itself and do what's best for their own people. Absolutely. But that being said, the right-wing propaganda oftentimes conflicts immigration issues with Islam, criminality with Islam. This obviously couldn't be further from the truth. I'll make the bold claim, if you will, that any country would truly benefit from an immigration of Muslims truly practicing Muslims. I'm not talking about people that are Muslim by label. No, I'm talking about truly practicing Muslims. People that get married, people that create children, people that don't drink alcohol are not involved with any kinds of degeneracy. That is always a net positive for the country. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel via Patreon, for example, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.